Hello, and welcome back to another Code Pro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to make an app that looks like this. We are going to be learning all about static table views. We're going to be learning when it's appropriate to use static table views in our iOS application and compare and contrast static table views with dynamic table view content. So to get started, open up Xcode, create a new single view iOS application, and let's get started. Once you've got your Xcode project open, let's head over to the main storyboard and start getting things set up. So here we just have a regular view controller and we're actually gonna use a table view controller for this one. So we can go ahead and delete the view controller from here. And if we go back over into the file hierarchy, let's go ahead and remove the view controller Swift file from the hierarchy there. And what we'll do is go back to the storyboard and go down to the object library here and look for a table view controller and drag that over onto the canvas. We'll also add the corresponding Swift file. So right click on the project folder and we'll do a new file. And uh, we'll do a Swift file. We'll just call this table view controller and hit create. And uh, we'll go ahead and import UI kit which contains table view controller, uh, the UI table view controller class. And we'll just define a class, table view controller, which derives from UI table view controller. And we'll override view did load. Now let's go ahead and hook this class back up to our view controller in the storyboard. So uh, we can open the assistant editor here and bring up the main storyboard. And just go ahead and select the storyboard. Um, we'll go over to the class inspector here and we'll just link up table view controller like that to create the association. So, so far so good. We're all set up here. Now, if we want to make this table view controller static in terms of the types of cells, then we have to go ahead and change a couple of things uh, or a couple of the attributes. So go ahead and select the table view while you have the, um, the view controller UI element hierarchy expanded like this and go to the attribute inspector here and where the content is dynamic if we open that drop down we can change this to static cells and that basically means that we can predefine how many cells this uh, table view is going to have in the interface builder rather than have it loaded dynamically from a variable data source that it might have in multiple elements or no elements it's always going to be just a static amount and so if we expand table view here, we can take a look at what we have. So we'll see that we have a section, we have a table view cell, we have three cells actually automatically, um, and they're all of the same height. So if we look at the section here and you go over to the attribute inspector, you can see that it defines the number of rows, it defines a header, a footer if we want to add text there. And we can create multiple sections by going back to our table view and simply bumping up the number of sections here. And so I can add in uh, multiple sections. I can change the amount of cells in a section like this. I can even change the height of a cell. So I can select an individual cell. Um, if I go over and look at the uh, row height here, I can go ahead and change that and increase maybe just one cell. I can change the content view maybe the background color of a cell. So there's lots of different things that we can do here um, with these cells to really make them stand out and be different. And they're very useful in places like settings. Application settings always typically use some kind of a static table view with switches, buttons, and labels that you can toggle on or off to enable or disable certain features within an application. Now for our table view, let's go ahead and just clear out some of these sections and We'll just start from scratch because we kind of added a lot there. So we'll go back to the table view and we'll add in our first section here. And we'll expand this uh, section here and just delete off or actually just go to the section and just remove one of the rows. So we'll do two rows for this section. And we'll change the title uh, from um, no header to privacy settings like that. And you'll see that it adds the section title right here. Um, if we wanted to add a footer, we could do something like this. Um, 
footer text, for example, and you can see it, it's, it's a similar kind of look to the header, but it's at the bottom of the uh, section. So I'm just gonna remove that for now. And if we go to the individual cells, if we want to add on an icon that shows that you can drill down into it, uh, what we can do here is go over to the accessory and from none we can change it to the disclosure indicator, indicating that there's another level to this cell. We can do the same thing for the second cell here too. Now let's go ahead and add in the next section. So go back to the table view and from sections here bump that up to two and you'll see here that it duplicated another privacy setting section that we had um, and that's okay. What we can do here is from one from two rows we can change it to one and from the header text from privacy settings we can change it to help settings. And now let's go ahead and expand the help settings section and um, so we have our one table view cell in here. So at this point we can go ahead and start adding in the label text for each one. So uh, go down into the object library here and look for a label and just drag that over onto the cell and we'll start with each one. So we can just call this one notification settings and we'll drag another label on here. And we'll call this one email settings. And uh, we can drag the final label on here and we can just call this um, help and support. So now we've got our static table view pretty much defined. Uh, the next thing we want to do is actually hook up some connections here to go to different view controllers. Um, so the easiest way to get started first is we want to create a navigation hierarchy. Um, so we want to embed our settings uh, table view controller uh, basically inside of a navigation controller. The easiest way to do that is to select your view controller, go to editor, and then go to embed in navigation controller here. And that'll go ahead and set us up like that. Uh, and then what we can do here is if we want to give this a title so that it looks nice, we can go to our uh, view controller here, go down to the navigation item, and where it says title in the attribute inspector, we can just type in settings. And that'll give it a, a nice title there. So um, really at this point, we can add in a few view controllers from the object library here. So if you go to the bottom right and type view controller, we can start dragging three of those over. So what we'll do here is link up basically segues to each one of these different view controllers based on which row was selected. Um, so if we hold down the control key here on each row and um, click and drag over, we can create a segue on the storyboard. So I'm gonna choose the show segue here. And you'll see we get the navigation bar and that's because we're embedded in a navigation controller. So we inherit that navigation bar by default. And once we're here, we can just say under the attribute inspector that this view controller's title is um, notification settings, like that. And I'll go ahead and change that view color to something that looks a little bit better than white. There we go. And uh, so that hooks up that one. So we can do the same thing for the email settings here. Select the row, and just hold down that control key drag on over to this view controller and hit show for the segue. Um, we can select it and then change its title to email settings. And I'll change its view color, give it a yellow color. And finally, we'll do the help and support uh, exactly the same way. I'll hold down the control key and drag over to create that segue. And we'll go ahead and select it and give its title. Um, help settings or help and support. And just change that view color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go change my uh, navigation bars tint from this default blue. I'm gonna give it a black color there so it'll, it'll look a little bit better when we run it. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing because I, I wanna show something here that's kind of important. Um, let's go into the table view controller class and let's override the function did select row at index path. And this comes from the UI table view delegate uh, protocol that we automatically conform to because we're using a UI table view controller. It handles that for us behind the scenes. 
And so what we want to know is when we select a cell, I mean, obviously we're going to do these segues here, so we're not going to necessarily need to care about handling any logic in here, but it'd be kind of useful to know um, what's going on with this index path. And you'll remember that in most uh, single section dynamic table, view, table views, we always have that index path dot row. And, and that's fine, but now we have something else to consider, which is the section. And so if we look at, for example, if I were to print out the selected section is index path dot section. And so let's just go ahead and run this now in the simulator um, and see what this looks like and then observe our console log when this prints out to see what section is getting selected and kind of understand what's going on there. Also, don't forget to set your navigation controller as the starting view controller. So you can select it and go to the attribute inspector and toggle is initial view controller so that we have an entry point into our uh, flow. So here's the simulator and if I go into each each section here, let's look at that console output we have and you'll notice that the first thing that gets printed is the selected section is zero. Um, if I go into email settings, the selected section is also zero and if I go into help settings, the selected section becomes one. So if you think about it, um, like for you have uh, rows in maybe one section indexed at zero through n, uh, this is the same concept. We could have zero through n sections that contain zero through n rows. And so what we need to do is if we want to access any particular row, we have to know what section it's coming from. And that's where over here in did select row and index path, that if we know the section, we can then figure out the row and then respond accordingly if we needed to do things more programmatically inside of did select row and index path. And that same logic applies for many more of the table view delegate methods. That's where you'll start to consider the section before you make an assumption on the row so that you're accessing uh, the right cell in the right section. So as you can see, uh, static table view cells are pretty similar in a lot of ways to dynamic table view cells, except we know how many we're going to have and we can define the section, but they still use all of the same methods from UI table view delegate we can get a section, we can get a row, we can change things accordingly. If we want to from here, we can change the class of the table view cell to a custom class. We can, act, we can hook up interface builder outlets um, for individual rows back to our view controller if we want to. So they, they play by pretty much the, the same rules and they're super helpful um, for settings in your app or anywhere where there's a, basically a defined list of things in a table uh, that are likely to not change. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and let me know. Smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow CodePro on social media and let me know in the comment section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.